You're listening to the Racing Virginia Podcast. Now, here are your hosts. And welcome to episode number 70 of the Racing Virginia Podcast. I'm Dave C. I'm Brandon Brown. <laughs> Not the driver, by the way. We did. It's that's it's becoming a, st- a, a yeah. running joke now. You yeah, know, it's become it really is becoming a, ru- a running joke uh, because there are two Brandon Browns here in Virginia. Yeah, and in, they've both been on it. You've been on the show. He's been on the show. Yeah. So and uh, we're we're both in the racing Virginia family, I guess you could call it. So yes. Yes. We have yes. to differentiate between the two every once in a while. Uh, first of all, um, you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, Thank you. I, I like to give uh, credit where credit is due. You're uh, you're doing a great job in the co-hosting, using your broadcasting skills that you went that you paid a lot for. Yeah, and paid paid a ton for, and I haven't gotten a whole lot out of them <laughs> until right now. You know, a couple of the skills work in social media and everything else, but uh, yeah, that journalism degree is starting to get a little bit more use. Uh, speaking of. Uh, social media. I want to also give you kudos uh, at uh, the Racing Virginia. Uh, the the amount, and I gotta stop saying uh. We, we, we just fine. talked about this. Yeah. Uh, um, if if you hear us, it's yeah. because Dave didn't cut any of them out in the post production. <laughs> uh, well, you, see, I've made I'm physically trying not to do it. Uh, <laughs> can't do it. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's can't fine. Do it. Uh, the, um, the amount of stuff that you're putting up and some of it's, uh, and the new sound, sound, wave, sa- graphics. Sa- sound wave graphics, yeah. man, they're really taken off. And I think we hit on something this week too. We yeah. put up you know, on, on our Facebook page. And by the way, if you're not liking that page or following mm-hmm. us, shame on you. Yep. Uh, to ramp yeah, up please. the content. Yeah. They were ra- <laughs> we're ra- ramping, uh, pretty heavily. Uh, we put, uh, you put two, Full length interviews. Mm-hmm. One with Tyler Crossno, and by the way, he did a fantastic yeah, job. Yeah, that was awesome uh, with uh, Virginia Motorsports Park. That got a lot of buzz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Bill Mullis, that got a lot, lot, lot of yeah. my buzz. One of our uh, one of our best performing, if not the best performing, uh, social media post uh, uh, on the channel outside of uh, the flip in the Valley Star last year at Martinsville. Oh, uh, we're we're gonna we're going after that one. <laughs> that's yeah. a good everybody likes a wreck for some reason yeah yeah that thing that thing which blew, which by the which by the way this show is a train wreck <laughs> that, that's our, we are starting you know we're starting it off you know getting all the bugs out starting it off and we're going to get back on track here uh here very very shortly man um, we got a great show for yeah. you uh we really do um we're going to start it off uh here in just a minute uh on the uh, uh, who's hotline uh we're going to have peyton sellers 2005 national Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series National Champion. Yeah, uh, wasn't that's a, that's wasn't new. called wasn't called that back in two thousand five. Uh, five time South Boston Speedway Champion. I mean, he's 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 a mentor yeah. now to a bunch of drivers. Uh, we're gonna have Mark Wirtz. My buddy Mark Wirtz uh, runs Asphalt and Dirt. Uh-huh. I'm gonna talk to him about in that. In my in my research last night, I found out about his dirt yeah. skills. Yeah, uh, ran modified at Virginia Motor Speedway. And he's going to be piloting a crate late model at Dixieland on a part-time basis. And, of course, story time with Randy Holman. I've had to apologize to everybody. Uh, Last week's story time had Mm -hmm. to be cut out (laughs) because for some reason, uh, in the middle of him saying what he did, the recorder had cut itself off. So we figured out what what color means recording now. And we're we're keeping an (laughs) eye on it. And then we're gonna have, man, this is gonna be fun. Uh, my, my, he's, I can call him a friend. Uh, uh, when I worked at South Boston Speed, we got to know him very well. Uh, went on several trips uh, in late model racing with him and Elliot Sadler. So we we ought to have a, some pretty cool stories uh, from him. But he's the president of. Is it Colleg Racing? Colleg Racing. Why do I always want to say Kaleg? Kaleg, but I don't it's Colleg Racing. Colleg Racing, who has been. Uh, Turned it up lately here in the Xfinity Series. Yes, uh, won the last two races. Yeah. Nope, nope, they didn't win. No. The, they won. Dinger. They won a race and then Dinger finished fourth to get the the ga- dash for cash. Dash for cash. Okay, which hundred thousand bucks. Yeah, just so that's. <laughs> and then we have uh, promoter, uh, promoter and managing partner of Dominion Raceway, Steve Britt, on and kind of our. Uh, series of how promoters are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm-hmm. Cross my fingers, and I'm pretty sure it'll happen. 
Uh, we're going to have Bill Sawyer next week uh, from Virginia Motor Speedway and talk about mm-hmm. this the season not happening. Yep. Uh, and, and his reasonings behind it, which, by the way, go to the RacingVirginia.com website and uh, read uh, Randy Hallman's yes. column this week. It, he uh, talks with Steve Britt. Mm-hmm. Uh, next week, he's going to get some insights from Bill Sawyer. So I kind of kind of mm-hmm. kind of cool. We get an audio version and a written version, and and it's going to be a little different, obviously. Yep. But uh, we got a great show for you. Uh, great weekend of racing yeah. homestead <laughs> although uh, if you move homestead to the middle of the summer uh-huh. you know <laughs> it's gonna rain it was so surprising to me it was raining in florida in june yeah. how about that <laughs> it, it it surprised you yeah okay no. <laughs> i know it's the sarcasm yeah uh, hopefully, hopefully people can hear the sarcasm can, there but, but the, they but they got it in i yeah. mean the, the the xfinity race Man. and the truck race yeah both of them were great races, and uh, the they didn't have any. I don't, they didn't have weather issues, did they? No, they they got them all in. I don't no, know they got. They, I don't think yeah. they had weather issues. And the uh, NASCAR Cup Series race yesterday had yeah. had, had a few had a few red flags. Yeah, not and, for and, wrecks and stuff, but yeah. for lightning and, and rain. The thing was, it was uh, it rained a little bit to start the race. Yeah. They they fired up the engines and it rained. And then it was lightning, lightning, lightning. The track never yeah. got wet after no. that. It, it's funny because the track was really had sun on it <laughs> on the back stretch in yep. turn three. Yeah. And um, over in the distance, you could see still a, a storm. But if they mm-hmm. if you can see lightning, you can get hit by lightning. By yes. the way, yeah, it is. That uh, that is a thing. And then uh, Denny Hamlin picked up uh, win number three, three, three right. on uh, the year. Yeah. And uh, and, um, and it, that was a good race, man. I'll tell you what, uh, Tyler Reddick. You look at the results. Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, some of these new young drivers, uh, rookies, are, mm-hmm. are both of them finished top ten. Yeah, and Bell, Bell's Reddick had been outrunning Bell consistently all year, and uh, I didn't expect Bell, even though you know he's he's good, he's a dirt tracker, and he he can run that top lane at Homestead yeah. really really well. I didn't expect that team to run top ten like they did, and he. He well, went out there and did something impressive. And Reddick, he does have Gibbs racing back. In. I know, I know. <laughs> but but based on his performance yeah. this year, and then Reddick, I mean Reddick really, really, uh, you know, impressed just because you know RCR has been a little down. Like yep. they're coming back up. Coming, they, that this new Chevy knows uh, yep. it really has helped. And uh, save for uh, if a couple different things happen different for Reddick in that race, he could have been up there battling Hamlin for that victory. Yeah, because he uh, during the race, I mean, he was uh, bat, he was up there near the lead um, and all, all day, all day, uh, and he was running right against the <laughs> wall, man. That's which my boy. Which he won two championships. Uh, and in I'm the telling you, and I'm that. telling you right now, the guys that are running up against the wall, yep. most of the ones that uh, they were talking about, mm-hmm. come from a dirt background. Yep. They like that loose. Yep. Chase Chase Briscoe. I mean, they're 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 so used to being out, up against the wall, like Eldora mm-hmm. Speedway. Yep. That that doesn't bother them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so a great race, Denny Hamlin. I, I know you want to talk about something, I know, I, and, I, I, yeah. and I and I am going to disagree adamantly. Okay, so the I, I put on a Racing Virginia's Facebook page last last night when Denny won, um, asking fans, "Is Denny a Hall of Famer? If he never races another Cup Series race or any other NASCAR race, is he a NASCAR Hall of Famer?" And uh, with his resume, right now, I say that he one hundred percent is a Hall of Famer. He'll get into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. Not so, sure. so you're agreeing with me? Well, well no, I'm not. <laughs> well, yes and no. I'm I'm just not sure. Uh, but but here's my thing. Okay. Uh, Denny's had a gr- a great racing career. Yeah. But unless you win a championship, you what? Know, uh, I just I really well. You don't win a championship. I don't think your career is complete. Okay. And, I mean, he's won a lot of races. Yep. But I, you also have to factor in who he's won the races with. Mm-hmm. Joe Gibbs Racing. Yep. Always fills a good car. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like that team is hurting for cash. Um, but he'll get in. He'll he will. In. I, I guess I'm. I, I guess I am saying yes. He will. He will get in. So I, I guess I am bowing to you and agreeing because he just tied. For 19th on the all-time wins list with 40 yeah. wins. And he's got some more races. Mark Martin, yeah. who 
is a Hall of Famer yeah. and never won a championship. I know. Mark, uh, I, for some reason, I like Mark because he has a dirt background. Mark, uh, <laughs> I, li- I like Mark because uh, my he was a uh, uh, my mom was a huge Mark Martin fan yeah. when uh, he, she was a he's a, he's actually a really great guy. Yeah, really is. Oh yeah, and, and if you've ever been around him uh, on uh, just a, a, a small basis, mm-hmm. uh, his diet he is he is crazy about his diet. Yep. Really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of vegetables. Uh huh. Lots of weightlifting too. Yeah. Back oh, in yeah. the day. Too. Oh yeah. He, yeah. I think uh, he had that book, right? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um. But see, so yeah, Denny's Denny's a Hall of Famer. Right now. Yes. He, in the uh, world, he would probably go in. Yes. <laughs> D- don't you? To me, I think. To be honest with you, there are a lot of people not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. That haven't been nominated. I'm like, man, how does that happen? Yeah. For one, the creator of this racetrack. Paul Sawyer, mm-hmm. how he hasn't been nominated is beyond me. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't. You got Clay Earls in. Yep. You know, with Martinsville, mm-hmm. um, Paul Sawyer was one of the original first tracks for for NASCAR. Um, but it, but hopefully at some point they will nominate him. He's on our walk. Yeah. Uh, the, walk of Fame. Yep. So and at the, that, uh, but. I would like to see him in the in the NASCAR. He yeah. he deserves as a promoter and what he did. Absolutely. I, I mean, let's be honest. This track here, Richmond Raceway, and we haven't been pushing tickets enough for the September race, by the yeah. way, <laughs> because we don't know how to market it quite yet. <laughs> and if you all don't know, that's my new job is to yeah. market the tickets. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we uh, we're working on that plan right now. But yeah, like he you know, he took a chance, uh, yeah. you know, transforming this facility from the from the fairgrounds raceway to the three quarter mile that you know today. You know, some people back in the days like leave it alone. You know, like yeah. race race fans are are like that sometimes, but. It proved to be one of, uh, um, you know, yes, I agree with you that he's all. <laughs> let me, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, we'll make a sound wave graphic for that and get the petition. Yeah, rolling. real quickly, a lot uh, happened with NASCAR. Um, that's that's got social media lit up. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. Advanced Auto Parts becomes the title sponsor of weekly racing for NASCAR tracks. So it's the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. Yep, and. In the this economic climate, with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of stuff going around, it is uh, it is awesome to see a brand like Advance, which is a nationally recognized brand, come on and put their name on this series. So they must uh, must you know, respect local racing, yeah. grassroots racing, and it's awesome for for everybody and, and involved. I love it because it's a Virginia company. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Ra- Richmond Raceway has a uh, auto parts store. Federated. Federated Auto Parts, yeah. which is a Virginia mm-hmm. store. So it's great. I mean, yeah. uh, to be, you know, for these companies to be involved. So I'm um, looking forward to – we're going to try to effort either uh, – well, maybe maybe somebody from NASCAR to talk about that yeah. and how that all came together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also trying to get a hold of Advanced Auto Parts uh, marketing director. So, yeah. And it would be cool to see, like, where they're coming from. Like, hey, yeah. what uh, – because – as a business assistant. Because this is this yeah. will trickle down to the local tracks here in Virginia that are NASCAR mm-hmm. sanctioned. Yep. So, uh, which we have, what, three, four? Yeah. Well, I don't know if M- Motor Miles sanctioned. But, but. Uh, da, 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 da. Good talk. It was. I like I, that. I like, you know, we'll, we'll do more of it. Yeah. Um, w- but we also know that uh, you guys want to – Hear from the experts. There it goes. Yeah, yeah. You want to you want to you, you, you want to hear interviews. You don't want to hear us chit chat all the time. We're gonna kind of we're gonna try to keep that to a minimum. Uh, we're gonna go to the HoosierDriver.org phone lines for our, to meet our first guest. He's been on before. In fact, he's a regular guest here on the Racing Virginia podcast. To, he's the 2005 NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series National Champion, and I know it wasn't called that back then. Uh, he's a five-time South Boston Speedway Champion. Uh, he raced sprint cars. That, I did not know that, and we're going to talk to him about that. Uh, got a win and a third-place finish uh, this past weekend at Dominion Raceway in his first weekend of racing. He drives the number 26 Danville Toyota Clarence's Steakhouse Toyota Camry. He is Peyton Sellers. Good morning, guys. How are we doing today? How you doing, bud? 
That, that's a that that's a long intro. <laughs> you, you made it sound good. I like the way you did it though. You, you made it sound like I was truck driver. Yeah, well, hey, <laughs> you uh, in Virginia? In, well, first of all, you've won a national weekly racing series title. I mean, obviously, you were division uh, division one champion as well. I didn't we've put been, it. We've been been very blessed and been able to do it a long time. And Virginia is my home state, so uh, you know we take a lot of pride in that. Being able to kind of call South Boston home, and but still we get to go to Langley and Dominion and everywhere in between. Uh, Peyton. Uh, I'm I'm ashamed of myself that I did not know you raced sprint cars. I did I did I ran many sprints, micro sprints for a couple of years, and then I ran some uh, 305 sprints uh, with the Virginia Sprint guys, and uh, did that just a little bit. And we realized pretty quick there was a lot of traveling involved. Uh, and I wanted to go to like a 360 or a 410 sprint, but that's kind of where my passion was, to be quite honest with you. But at the time, we had 13 asphalt tracks running within four hours of our house. Yeah. And the closest sprint car track was about three and a half hours away to get to the first one. So yeah. uh, natural progression, Dad's like, if we're going to race, we're going to do it on asphalt. And I said, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I like even more, though, that you got the little dirt in your veins. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thoroughly <laughs> enjoy the dirt racing. Uh, you, um, uh, we're, first of all, this was your first weekend of racing. What? Thinking back in your career, when's the last time that you started in the m- middle of June to race? It's been a while, for sure. We, um, you know, never, never since I've raced go karts did we start this late in the season. And, um, you know, we had some exciting racing going on Saturday at Dominion there, and I think it was everybody else's first race too, because we had some incidents and different things, right. some guys wrecking that, you know, kind of getting it, getting the rust knocked off a little bit. The, um. It, it's been hard. It really has. I mean, you guys field cars for other drivers uh, with sellers, um, uh, motorsports. Uh, yep. And, yep. Uh, you know, some of the racing in North Carolina has gotten going. I, I was surprised not to see you go down to, to North Carolina and race a little bit. Well, we had customers running out of our shop at Ace. We were at Ace for, for the first, you know, three events that they had down there this year. And, you know, my hat's off to those guys for, for trying to put forth the effort. Uh, Robert Turner and his, you know, his, his son, Jason there, their hands were tied behind their back. They said, yeah. look, we're, you know, they say they're going to put us in jail if we race. And he says, we're in jail right now. You know, this is how we have to make a living this track. We owe money on this track. We've, we've got to be trying to have racing going on. Uh, you can go to, you know, and, and you hear all the same yeah. arguments, you know, we can go to Lowe's, we can go to Walmart, but we can't go to our local short track, you know? So, um, they took a bold move. They, they, they went against the law and yeah. and put on events, and they were great events. People were there having a good time. It was excellent racing. Um, they were very humble and, and grateful for people to come out and race, and they said, look, you know, we know you don't have to race with us. We know that we're, you know, bucking the trend here and racing, but we appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, they had over 6,000 fans one night for racing down there, and it was good racing, and everybody liked it. Uh, obviously, the, the governor – didn't agree with it, kind of shut them down for a little bit here. And, um, you know, Dominion, they made a bold move too. And I, I told everybody, you know, the owners of that place had to take a beating this past weekend with no fans there because we're yeah. all there for the fans. It takes every it takes every piece of it to make a short track survive. And um, from the concessions to the front gate to the back gate and selling tires and everything in between, um, you know, it's hard to sell sponsorship for a race with no fans, you know. So it's, you know as well as I yep. do, as good as anybody, it's hard to make it happen. And um, we wanted to go race ace, but we did. With the first two races, we had four drivers there out of our shop racing. So we were a big part of helping with those races and being a part of it. And, uh, and I enjoyed it. Um, I hats off to those guys. Um, I, you know, I commend them. I don't know that I would have had the uh, – I guess you would call it bravery. I guess it would be bravery because they knew the, what could happen. You know, they could be shut down and that sort of thing, but they um, they pushed through and made it happen. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of them for, for doing it and trying to get it done. And um, equally as proud of Dominion for, for putting on a race with no fans. You know, South Boston come out and said, hey, we're, we're just going to wait until we can, can have fans. And, you know, until the governor says, hey, let us go racing, you know, we're going to hold up. And, and I respect that as well because, you know, it's expensive to have it without fans. So um, I, I, was, I was in a little bit of a tight box because, Clarence's Steakhouse has been with me forever. They're a big supporter of ours, and, and they were shut down. 
you know, it's perception is not good when they've got a race car out racing every week and they've got all their employees laid off, yeah. you know. So um, I was kind of mindful of that the whole time as well. Yeah, so at Dominion this past weekend, um, you know, was this the first time uh, maybe in forever that you've – run without fans in the stands and as a driver you know we've talked to other drivers that have you know mixed opinions on it um what was it like getting out of the car after winning a race with nobody there you have the same excitement you have the same joy um you know they've got cameras guys there and you know they were doing the facebook and so uh, honestly it was um the, the thrill of victory was just as strong as ever uh, not having fans there does kind of sour you a little bit because you want to do it in front of your your fans, the guys that come out and, you know, pay money to see your race and put on a show. And um, let's face it, we're competitors inside the fence, but outside of the fence, we're, we're showmen. You know, we got to put on a show for people. And um, people enjoy seeing racing. And we had good racing up front, uh, you know, between um, uh, Doug Barnes and, and Tyler Hughes and all those guys, they were putting on good racing. You know, myself and, and back through the field, there's good racing. So uh, I hate it that the fans aren't there to see that. But also, I understand. Um, I understand what everybody's having to go through right now. Everybody's inconvenienced by this stuff, and um, I think once we get through this election year, a lot of the viruses and, and rallies and protesting will all calm down one way or the other. So, oh, I was watching the results pretty closely because uh, us at Virginia Motor Speedway, we have a sponsored driver doing well. One of our drivers. Uh, he's been racing the sportsman division at, at Virginia Motor Speedway the last couple of years, uh, mm-hmm. and um, he he's moved up. He's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna race a crate late model whenever we can. Uh, yep. But he's also got an asphalt modified and a asphalt late model. Chase Burrow in the okay. uh, double zero um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. after hours fabrication is his or and uh, after uh, hours uh, race cars. Um, yeah, his dad, uh, Ryan Burrow. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, but uh, so we so we were following the players. He did pretty good. He did. He did. He's come a long ways, and uh, he's getting some seat time under his belt. Every race you see his performance pick up just a little bit, and I think it's just a matter of you know obviously Ryan and those guys build fast race cars, and uh, I think it's just a matter of him understanding what he needs, and uh, that dirt experience is going to help with a lot of that as well. So uh, you know. It, it's interesting to see young drivers come along and some of them progress pretty fast and some of them don't, you know, but I think you'll see Chase progress pretty fast by the fact that um, the learning gap between knowing what you need by the feel of, you know, feel of the seat there, figuring out what you need and then being able to relate it to the guys working on your car. And um, I think they'll get over that learning curve and he'll continue to get better and better. Yeah, and, and like you said, I mean, it's a it's a great family, the Burrow family, and uh, we're we're proud to be uh, a sponsor on that car, and uh, looking forward to seeing where he where he goes. Uh, that's the other thing about you that I love, Peyton, is that you are a true mentor. I, I you know you help a lot of guys. Most of them are way younger than you, and uh, I mean, when you here you are, you you see Chase Burrow, and you you kind of are seeing. Things and I'm sure if he came up and said, "Hey Peyton, can you can you tell me about this?" That you would do that. Yeah, absolutely. My door is always open for for young drivers because I was that kid, 14 years old, trying to race stock cars and sneaking into the pits because you wasn't old enough and, and trying to race. And meanwhile, figuring out what you needed to go fast, but trying to gain respect too. Uh, I remember there was a stretch there. I'd been racing them at Sportsman, and we had won some races and done pretty well. And it came time to move up to late models. My first year in late models. I remember three weeks in a row, uh, one of the guys that I respect more than more than most in the infield is Eddie Johnson. Yes. Eddie has always been nothing but a true gentleman on and off the track. And uh, I remember about three weeks in a row I crashed with Eddie. And all three weeks it was my fault, and I knew it. And, you know, I, I take this long walk of shame down the pit road to go talk to Eddie and apologize for tearing his old car up. And, you know, and him understanding each week, where I was at as a young driver you know he understood that we had speed and I had youth and we had fast cars but we just you know until you get it all put together until it all happens in slow motion as a driver it's hard to uh it's hard to finish races first and then you got to do that before you can go win races so uh I know what it's like to be that young driver and uh, honestly this past weekend Daniel Silvestri who is driving out of our shop um 
he qualified on the pole. It was his first pole this year, um, or first pole in a late model for us. And uh, it, was a, it was a very, you know, good day because it's like uh, it's like seeing your child do good. You know, it's it, it, it's it's more of a joy yeah. to see him qualify on the pole than it would have been for me to be on the pole. So, uh, you know, to take him last year from moving from legends, you know, he's been very successful in legends to, to now getting a pole in a stock car. Uh, it's a big move, you know. So we were we were very proud of that. Daniel run fourth in both races, and um, you know ha- had an excellent night. Well, we'll have to uh, get him on, talk to him a little bit. Absolutely, he's from Fredericksburg. He's from he's a Northern Virginia guy, and uh, <laughs> you know his parents love racing. They go with him every week. They're supporting him week in and week out, and um, you know it's it's good to see him be able to to take that leap and go to late models and. He was pretty fast right out of the get-go last year at South Boston a few races, and this was his first race at Dominion in a stock car. So, uh, you know, it was a it was a big feather in our cap as a team and uh, and also a proud moment to see him do what he did. The the one thing about this pandemic uh, that kind of, you know, it's making you travel uh, farther. You're getting to mm-hmm. race with different guys that you normally wouldn't race with. And, uh, I mean, 26 cars that – uh, for late models, I mean, that's that's a stout field. You know, you don't see that at a lot of local racetracks anymore. It was a very strong field. I think everybody's just been cooped up so long. They're ready to go racing, and uh, they're ready to support these tracks. You know, Richard Storm and, and his team over at Dominion, um, we have tested up there quite a bit with drivers um, all winter or, or all spring because he was open. He was there every day. Him and his wife were there every day um, when, when they could have took the option to be home laid off and they were there working trying to keep that track going and you know kind of um you know supporting the competitors by giving them a place to go practice and that sort of thing so it was nice to be able to go support them and see how much effort they put into keeping their track alive and going well um you know the owners of the track to actually have a race without fans this week you know part of it says you know that's kind of a dumb idea to have a race without fans but you also got to look at the competitors. They're ready to do something, too. They're ready to get back to normal life. You know, everybody's just ready to get back to normal life right now. And to be able to do that was uh, was good. And, uh, you know, in that same vein, um, do you think that uh, when we do get back to normal, whenever that is, do you you foresee, say, a resurgence of, of crowds and, and people who are, who are cooped up and wanting to get out, along with uh, high car counts, say, across racing Virginia and across, uh, across the country, really? You, you know, right now, I think short track racing is positioned to take off and do extremely well. Um, with with everything going on in the news and media right now, and, and I, without talking politics, NASCAR has made some very bold moves in the last few weeks to step out on a limb and, and go in a direction that's completely off base with their fan base and what's got them to where they're at. Um, and I understand why. I understand the whole picture. I, I, I see it from the outside looking in, I see it from the inside looking out. Um, they've made a very bold stance, and I think people are going to be looking for something to do on Saturday night. I think fans love short track racing. If you, there's no politics involved. There's no, um, you know, there's no underlying, you know, theories or anything behind short track racing. It's pure. It, it, it's pure form of racing. People love it. People want to be a part of it. They can go out and hoot and holler and, you know, support their local driver and, and feel as they're part of the part of the sport. And I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but I think short track racing is positioned right now to really take off and do well. It is. Uh, it is. Um, and I think it's been that way for a while. I think, mm-hmm. I mean, you could be a NASCAR fan and still go to a NASCAR race mm-hmm. and go to the local short track. Yeah. I don't see why you have to pick one or the other. And that's yeah. sometimes what I feel like, you know, when you talk to some of the fans that, you know, they just want to kind of hang with the NASCAR stuff. I'm going to say, where do you think these guys come from? <laughs> and, that, and that was one of the big things as a, I grew up, uh, you know, just watching NASCAR cup and Bush series and stuff. But uh, when I moved to Chicago, I started going to dirt track races and I started going to drag races and, and opening up your, your racing world to all this <laughs> other really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, this is, this is a buffet. This isn't a one course meal. And Virginia has a huge <laughs> buffet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, in fact, Virginia race fans are, 
should be. I mean, they should feel spoiled. Yeah. With the amount of stuff that comes to this state. <laughs> it's the only state that has what two cup races. I mean, two cup tracks. Right. Uh, two we, cup tracks. We have we, a, hey, we, claim, we claim Bristol occasionally, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's right across the board. It's like right yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> so, man, it's close. You know, with, it's really close. With the kind of, you know, you take like the Lucas Oil guys; they come to Virginia race. You take um, the K and N series. You yep. take the Cup series. You take the modified guys. Um, you know, there's a lot of avenues to see good racing right yep. now in the state of Virginia, and you know, it's up to us, the short track racers, to get that word out somehow. But um, you know. We we need to be in the spotlight for for showing what Virginia has. I agree with that 100. percent Yeah. Well, we can't thank you enough, man, for taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know you're you're supposed to be working on on race cars, but uh, we love talking to you and uh, hope to talk to you again here shortly. Again, congratulations on the win this weekend. First weekend out, get a win. Can't can't beat that. Uh, yeah. And uh, good luck uh, uh, this coming weekend or or the or the, or the next. Thank you, sir. We I don't know. I don't know when you're racing next. Well, and we're we've been talking about that a little bit. Dominion has another race this weekend. Um, we, we'll probably end up back at Dominion again this coming weekend. We'll just kind of wait and see how the cards fall this week. Um, you know, everybody right now is kind of day to day figuring out what our governor is going to let us do and, and how he feels that we need to be, you know, being out in public and, and businesses open and that sort of thing. So we're um, we're kind of his mercy if he says we can go racing. I'm sure all the tracks are itching to get back at it right now. So uh, hopefully we can get back out and get back to normal life here quicker than quicker than we all you know, hope for. So. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good day. Man, he he's always a great interview. Oh, I don't he I don't think he's ever done a bad interview with no. us. Uh, and and he's right. I mean, there's a there's a lot on the buffet table mm-hmm. uh, for short track fans. Just short track fans. Yeah. I mean, and then you throw on top. Uh, you know, four NASCAR races, right? Yeah. One well, four, any four, well, it should have be been four NASCAR it, it weekends. Should have been, yeah, should, yeah. It should have <laughs> been four NASCAR weekends. Should have been an IndyCar weekend. Oh man, I, I am that, so. I know you and me happen. both, because uh, I'm telling you, that, that, yeah. if you've never seen any cars at <laughs> Richmond when they when they finally come back, you got to go. That, and I have not. I have not seen any cars I, I, at Richmond. I, I talked to one of the guys. Yeah, uh, cut, d- the drivers. I said, "How do you do it? I mean, you guys are so fast around this place." He goes, you "Can't blink." I mean, oh, when, what do you mean you can't blink? He goes, "If you blink in turn four, you're going to be in the wall in turn one." He yeah. said, "That's how quick we're getting down the front stretch." They just, it, they're, it's crazy. It is really. Good. We don't want to get too much. Of it. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, we need to. Um, Again, what a great interview, as always. Uh, yeah, let me see here. Who we got? I think we need to. I think we need to get. Um, be nice to do vo- video calls, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna Skype them in. Yeah, Skype, Face, yeah. FaceTime them in. We could do that once. Uh, once we get the technology up and running, we'll. Yeah. It'll be good. Well, let's go back to the Who'sYourDriver.org hotline. Uh, we're going to talk to one of my buds. Uh, he is out of Chesapeake, Virginia. He's running a little bit. He's running dirt and asphalt. Limited schedule. You know, yeah. he is, doesn't run because he's helping mentor other drivers, similar to Peyton Sellers. Yeah. Uh, the new generation. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a spotter for, for who? I don't I will know. ask him in a minute. <laughs> um, he looks at me like I know. Uh, he's, he's won four championships. He's the two, uh, he's a two time NASCAR regional champion. Uh, he's been doing a lot of mentoring. As I, I mentioned, he, he, he he normally pilots the number 55 Duncan Corvette parts.net pro turf Chevrolet. Uh, but he'll also be piloting, piloting the number 38 pro late model, crate late model, uh, and some limited appearances at Dixieland uh, as soon as they get back to racing. So uh, he is Mark Wirtz. What's up, buddy? Oh, not a whole lot. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, you know how you know how the those uh, I, I I couldn't find I, I wanted to find some more stuff because I wanted to just make you know put you on a pedestal. Oh, that's no big deal. I just uh, <laughs> unfortunate to and blessed to still be racing. We're not. 
not into it for any accolades or, or uh, anything like that anymore, but we definitely appreciate and enjoy all the stuff we've managed to accomplish over the past. How in the world are you, as a driver, uh, coping with the COVID-19 pandemic, especially since uh, Langley is closed? At what, you know, Dixieland was racing, now they closed due to uh, their governor's uh, actions with ACE. So how are you coping with this? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, the world's aware of everything that's going on with the COVID-19 issue, but uh, we're just, uh, you know, taking things as if the race world is still alive and well, and uh, we're uh, working at the shop, you know, just like we always do, and uh, taking a little extra time getting the cars ready now, which some of that seems to be working out in our favor. Uh, hopefully we'll be better prepared when the seasons do kick off. And uh, as far as a peace of mind, we've been trying to test as much as we can. Uh, I've been to Langley three times now, twice with uh, the 19 car that Bubba Johnson owns. And uh, it's got Corvette parts down that and Pro Turf and Duncan on it as well. And uh, I've been over with Connor Hall uh, twice, checking his cars down. And uh, I've been to Dixieland three times with the Swords Marine Hubbard family number 38 uh, dirt car uh, trying to be prepared for when the Friday night dirt stuff opens up and uh, I guess that'll be our our only dirt option this year uh, you have to look at you know playing with y'all some of Virginia yeah. Motor Speedway next year uh, yeah well, don't, don't even remind me Mark it, it's <laughs> uh, it's it's very sad um, but What's it, what's it like for you to jump back in a, in a dirt car? I mean, you, you know, since your modified days at, at Virginia Motor Speedway, I don't think you've done any dirt racing. It's just been all asphalt. Well, that's correct. And uh, I tell you, it was kind of like, for me, it, well, two things went on here. It was a, it was a huge uh, appreciative compliment to me to think that somebody like the Hubbard's thought enough of me and, and uh, potential ability to be able to even pilot not only just one of their cars, but their best car. Um, and as well as Bill Mullis to, you know, jump in and be involved and, and with, with his dirt efforts and all. But the, uh, <clears throat> for me, it was a, it was a like, you know, this would be a little personal test. I'm not going to tell anybody about, you know, can I still do this? Because, yeah. you know, Asphalt's one thing, and it, there's nothing easy about any form of racing, but a dirt late model is a whole different beast. And to uh, to, to get in the car and, and, and get to where we were actually, you know, finding a line and learning how to chase the cushion and, and, you know, go from a wet, tacky track or to a dry, slick track and all that and just still be able to do it was kind of like a, a personal goal for me or you know uh, accomplishment for me and it was uh i just think as i get older it, it, all this involvement whether it's helping connor or any any younger driver or or, or jumping in the car myself just keeps me in tune it's, it's like playing golf you gotta practice every day when you're not in a match yeah and, and for fans who might not know how difficult that is to you know jump in a dirt car after racing asphalt for uh for so long um what do you have to do mentally physically inside the car to get used to it and and you know the throttle control and response and all that stuff oh man it's all the way down to how you control the brakes on the car i mean <laughs> from three-wheel braking to four-wheel braking and 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 it's you, you almost hit a, a control delete, uh, wipe out the asphalt mode and insert a SIM card with dirt mode. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, I guess when the track gets dry slick, you can kind of incorporate some of your asphalt approach to racing a little bit of lift early and roll in and easy on the gas. But when the track is kind of wet, um, you just got to be buried it in there and, and hammer down on the throttle. And so it's, uh, it's a little bit of a different mindset, but what's weird is, you know, to sit in the pits and watch one of those cars hike up off the corner and go down the straightaway. And you're thinking to yourself, my God, how, how does, 
how does the driver even handle all that movement? The odd part about it is you're so focused on down the straightaway in your next corner, you don't even realize that's all going on. <laughs> It's, it's, Look, I've been begging you. How, how long have I been begging you to get back in a dirt car? Oh, since 2002. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the nice thing about dirt racing uh, right now is there's a lot of races within a couple hour uh, tow that pay a lot of money. Yeah, and you know, and there's some asphalt races too that pay a lot of money, yep. but uh, I guess our deal right now, you know, with with like Langley Speedway and South Boston and, and now Dixieland since a little bit of a setback last week after a great open night, as well as Virginia Motor Speedway, um, we're entrenched with the community. Right. And we, the fans complete the whole puzzle. And, you know, we, we testing is one thing, staying on top of things and, and making sure the cars are ready is another. But, Racing without the fans, it just uh, kind of puts us all in a, a little bit of it. it you know, we're, I think uh, the bulk of us are okay with racing. Um, we want to race. We, we That's what we do. But we want to race in front of the fans. So right. I think getting back to your point of traveling to some of these bigger uh, races, I think we're okay just kind of waiting right now, trying to do as much social media blast of the cars testing. So in a way that the name of the sponsors are still getting out there, like CorvetteParts.net, Team Parts, Nothing Done, that Swords and Marines, Baseball Credit Union, Pro Turf. But it's it's you got to find other avenues. It gets back to what I said on your show before. There's more to advertising yep. and plugging your sponsor than just Saturday night. So we we've had Saturday night taken away from us. So that should be just a little bit of a setback, but you got to turn it around and figure out another way to get it out there. And that's why even Saturday when we went to Langley for a couple of hours, I put two videos out on Twitter and, and Facebook. And, and then the nights we go to Dixieland, you know, with the names on the car and a little short video, you just got to guerrilla market your sponsor the best you can with what you got. And you have some great sponsors. Duncan has been with you for a long time. Corvette uh, Parts.net has been with you for a long time. And they're very active at promoting and sharing what you put up. Uh, that's what that's what kind of makes me. That's not that's not just a sponsor. That's a family. That's a partnership uh, where they're trying to help you and you're trying to help them. And uh, you know, you take your car to a lot of Duncan openings in this area. Well, it's you know it's. That's what we got to do. It's, it's, you know, obviously you want to make it a partnership, but beyond the partnership, it, it, it turn it into a family type atmosphere where, you know, they can feel comfortable just taking the phone and calling me direct. And there's no marketing agency in between the PR people. Uh, Tom and TJ have been awesome. Uh, they obviously, uh, as you well know, they, they are associate sponsors on the 32 cup car. Um, and they just, they're they're entrenched with short tracks and they realize that the short track fans that are at the Saturday night venues are are their market, you know, they're their their go to people as well as the fans are at the big races. But if it wasn't for the tentacles that reach out to the Saturday night tracks, I mean that's where the lifeline is to the to the whole country as far as a uh, uh, marketing aspect. And um Duncan's the same way, you know, they, they they're big into the you know, the racing thing and, and, and advertising as you see them with football and major league, uh, hockey and baseball. And, but they realize too, that they need to reach out to the communities around their stores and they use the, uh, uh, the lifeline of local short track racing to reach it. Well, you have done such a great job over the years. Um, we can't thank you enough for coming on and, you know, letting us, uh, uh, know how you were coping with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It seems like every interview we do, that's kind of a, uh, a theme, a question that we kind of get into with everybody because it's something that we've none of us uh, uh, have ever experienced. I haven't experienced anything like this. Uh, and, um, you know, if we just kind of, and like you said, sometimes it's better to kind of wait it out 
and try to push the issue. Uh, I was a little thrown back uh, to, to read that uh, in the Cars Tour put a post out that they had a crew member of a driver or a driver that tested positive for COVID-19 coronavirus. And, you know, uh, as, as I've told a bunch of people, this all, you know, this thing all started with one person. <laughs> you know, yes, it was over in China, but it started with one person. And you just got to be careful. Yeah. You just got to be careful. I mean, there's... Uh, I thought you were going to blame it on Vaughn again. No, well... <laughs> That's we Mark. Should we blame it on that? We can blame it on Vaughn, can't we? I mean, Vaughn wants to take on that bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, real real quick, because um, we are way over on the yeah. show already, uh, <laughs> and, and you know how that goes, right? You've been on the show many times. Once we start talking racing, it's hard yeah. to stop. Um, oh, but yeah. but for you, seeing Vaughn Crittenden. Uh, who has worked for the racetrack on social media, uh, has done some announcing and stuff like that. What do you feel as a driver he is going to be able to bring to Langley Speedway? I mean, I think it's a good blast of youth to, to inject back into the racing community locally, too. I mean, I, little things matter to me as a veteran driver. I thought it was cool to, you know, be out on an odd Saturday testing and look over, and there's Vaughn standing up on top of the uh, the office uh, balcony and checking his phone. And, and it just, so, you know, to some, they may not put any thought into it. To me, I'm thinking, here it is, 2 o'clock, beautiful Saturday afternoon, and Vaughn's worried about what's going on at the racetrack. That tells me he cares. He and does. he's involved, and I think it's going to be – you know, once he gets comfortable in his shoes at that spot at Langley and, and, and gets to where it's more fluent, which it is. I'm not saying it's not, but this one, it, he's more ready to just be himself. I think it's going to be good for the, the entire Langley Speedway family. Well, again, thank you for taking some time out of your schedule to visit with us, my friend, and we look forward to talking to you again. Thanks for having me on, guys. Folks, he uh, is Mark Wirtz. He normally drives the number 55 Duncan car, and you you know it. it it's blue. It's it's a beautiful car, but uh, he's he's kind of moving around, doing a few other things. But uh, at, at, <clears throat> real quick, as I said, that kind of threw me back that they put that press release out about yeah. <laughs> about somebody to you know that was there two two days later found out he had he was positive. Yep. It um so it's it, it, now you got to worry about yeah who you were around. Do you do you call and tell them? I mean that as as much as I hate not racing, I think this is one of the reasons why we sh- you know it it should take it a little slower. Mm-hmm. You know because you want this stuff to go away. Yeah, you don't and want I, it to spread. And I mean you you see like uh, the states that have opened, you see they're having record cases and stuff. So you know, just. If we are out there, if we are racing, if we are around other people at the track, mind your P's and Q's and mask up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> mask up. <laughs> I like that. Oh, uh, Lord. Uh, hey, by the way, I found some, I, I found the music, I think, that I want to use for the opening for this next segment. Uh-oh. Because this comes a- every week. And I have to, I'm going to have to apologize to him for my, for the, my effort of having to cut last mm-hmm. week's uh, story out. But we're going to get that story because that story is pretty damn yeah. cool. And and you know he's, he's going to tell it just as well this time. Yeah, this obviously. Time. But I, I found some great, great music. We're going to get okay. we're going to have a, an intro for him and everything. But it's time. It's story time with Randy Holman. How you doing, Randy? Hey, guys. hey how are you? Man, I, I have to apologize. Last week's in it. That that was that was a great story, and then I couldn't use it because I lost all the half, the just about all the second part of it. And, and it's, it, it's red right it, now. It's red right now. So we are watching this thing like a hawk. <laughs> uh, but first, first of all, uh, great uh, column. And by the way, folks, you can go to racingvirginia.com to uh, read Randy Holman's co- uh, column. Uh, you, you you talk with Steve Britt uh, this week. Uh, you're gonna, if you're you're going to talk with uh, my boss, uh, Bill Sawyer, next week uh, uh, about how they are coping and and why they're making the decisions they're making uh, during this COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. 
Right. Yes, that's right. So uh, did, did you get it? Did you feel like you got any insight from doing this, talking to both of these uh, promoters? Well, sure, I did, because circumstances are different for different tracks and different places, and there are different solutions, uh, different approaches to take. And, you know, one one can work things one way and one another, and it doesn't mean either of them is right or wrong, but they're making their effort and trying to do the best for their track, uh, as well as their fans and, and competitors. So. Uh, you know, they, they have to, they've got to live with their decisions. So the, the biggest thing I've, I've learned, I think, is it is it is very difficult for racetracks and racetrack promoters and owners, uh, as, as it is for so many of us in so many different kinds of uh, businesses and ways of life. But these guys have a, a really tough time right now. They, they, you know, they have, they want to do the smart thing. They want to do the right thing, and they want to have fun, and they want they want their fans to remember that they are fun, and that you know they want to have them to come back when the time is right, whenever that is. So it's a hard thing. Um, the 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 other thing uh, with this, uh, and I know that my sidekick here uh, wants to talk to, about a, a particular Virginia driver. Yeah, uh, some some guy won a won an important race last night. Um, you might know him, Denny Hamlin. Uh, thoroughly thoroughly dominated at Homestead. Uh, um, it, and that's a place where he's won before. But when the championship's been on the line, he's kind of uh, not uh, not performed as as well as they wanted to. Uh, were you impressed with that race that he ran last night? Well. Yeah, <laughs> who wouldn't be? <laughs> you know, he he uh, he let the race come to him when he needed to. Uh, he he was he was clearly um, the the car that was going to be best after ten or fifteen laps. Uh, he wasn't always the, the strongest at the, at the beginning of a restart, although he seemed to get better. But he, he knew that if, if he did get out gun on the restart, you know, the only thing he had to worry about was having a, a caution uh, uh, and, and only five laps to go when they went back to green. And if he had more than 20, he was good. He was gold, man. Mm-hmm. And a couple of times he had to just be calm. You know, a couple guys going to get by. I'll be fine. And he was. He's, his crew has also done a terrific job for him this year. They have gained spots when there's spots to gain, and they keep him up front when he's up front. And uh, man, you just can't ask for more than that. They have been tremendous, and not just not just last night. That's been that's been their their routine straight through. Now I got two questions for you before we uh, you know get to. Uh get to your your story that we had just talked about earlier um, but we had ourselves a little debate here uh, earlier in the show um, and I say that right now as it stands um, if he never runs another race Denny Hamlin is a surefire NASCAR Hall of Famer where do you sit on that oh I've said that for two or three years now I, I don't think there's been any doubt for a long time uh, you know, the guys won. Look, it's not just 40 races. It's 40 races of every kind. He's won on on road courses. He's won on super speedways. He's won the biggest races. Uh, and multiple times. He's won, on, you know, on the, on the medium tracks. He's won on short tracks. I mean, there's, there's no place that Denny is not capable of winning he doesn't he doesn't go anywhere and like oh i'll just put in my you know i'll mail it in this week and try to keep out of the wall he's he's a threat to win everywhere he goes and now he's won 40 races and i mean there's no way he wouldn't be a hall of famer just he's gonna be um what, so, so what's the, you had okay. two questions for him. I, I did uh the, what's the other question the second one is um he's <laughs> 
you remind, he reminded me that I had two questions. <laughs> um, the second, the second one is, uh, um, you know, now that he, you know, he is, uh, he won the 500 and with this performance here, do you believe that he is the, the front runner to win the, win the cup when it goes to uh, Phoenix later this year uh, to get his first uh, cup series championship? Barely, I do. Um, and and I am not. I'm not a fan of the format that ends up with four guys in one race racing for the title. Yeah, uh, I like I'm that not, one. I'm not that tr- big a fan of the playoffs in general. But I get the point, and I I understand why it it has been formatted the way it's formatted they want they want the drama to last until the final race and they want drama in the final race they don't want somebody to wrap it up with two to go and so i get that that's a tv thing and it's you know it's to try to hold your own against football and all that kind of stuff uh but for me i mean look i i covered i covered a number of seasons where somebody did wrap it up with races to go or, or, or and, and even had it all but wrapped up you could pretty much put a stamp on it you know quite a few races left in the season but to me it didn't matter what mattered was the race itself what does the guy do on that day at that track in that car and that was the fun for me it always has been still is i don't go i don't go to the race to see people manage points or or figure out how to make sure they make the cut on the next elimination. I go to see them race that race. So don't much like the playoffs, but if, if it were 10 races and the whole playoff counted, which once upon a time it did, that would be all right. But when it gets down to one race with four guys, it's too arbitrary. Mm-hmm. You know, sooner or later, all four of them are going to crash. <laughs> and, you know, you're going to have a – it won't be the race winner. It'll be some guy who finished sixth. Uh, you know, and everybody else had more trouble than, than than that racer did. So, those are my objections. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, that, that's the way it's set up. So, you got to race that way. And I think every champion they've had during the playoffs has been worthy. I don't think they've had really a bad champion talk, give them that. But I think they're very lucky. Mm-hmm. Now, we're coming down to Phoenix. Benny is, has always been great at Phoenix, but he has sometimes been great at Phoenix. And I expect him to be great at Phoenix this time. So, yeah, I'll I'll put him there as my favorite to win it. Uh, gosh knows he's going to want it uh, as much as or more than anybody else. Yeah, it uh, and it it'd be nice. I mean, obviously, yeah. a Virginia driver it'd be nice for a Virginia, another Virginia yeah. driver become uh, a champion. It I, I'm like you, and we maybe the, one of this story time with Randy Hallman. Maybe that's uh, uh, something one week we can talk about is the format and why. Mm-hmm. Uh, I understand it. They're trying to create excitement going down into. Sure. The, I mean, there were a lot of years uh, with the old point system that they were the guy was you know, so many points ahead that he probably could have just not gone to the last race and won the championship. Sure. Oh, oh more than once. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, times. but I mean, it's, uh, and, and it's funny because I, uh, a couple of friend, people I know, they try to uh, keep tabs of the points like normal, like it would have been, mm-hmm. and then compare it to how it is now. Uh, let's, yeah. Let, but yeah let, you can, you can, you can find that you can find people who who have, who have done that done the math on that and and shown how before playoffs or yeah. with this playoff format or that playoff format and I think I you know I haven't paid that much attention but I think the what they say the numbers say oh Jimmy Johnson would have only won five yeah you know well the thing is Jimmy Johnson would have raced differently yep. had the points been different you know you you race. With you know what the rule is, just like saying, oh, somebody would have won all these races if he'd been able to run a Superbird. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you can't. <laughs> you know? yeah. you, you, you run the rules you're given, and and that's 
you know, I, I'm, you, just, you can't take that stuff away from Jimmy or, or any of the guys who've won during the playoffs because the playoffs are there. That's the way it is. Well, uh, like, we'll talk about that on on a different. Maybe we'll make yeah, that a segment sure. on on that talk because yeah. I think sometimes people look at it and they go, "Well, why are they really doing this?" You know, they they don't do it like short yeah. tracks do it. You know, most yeah. so, most short tracks don't do that. There are some short track series that actually have something similar that, and they call it the hunt and other you know other names. But uh, yeah, but yeah. but uh, you know, trying to create excitement. And I understand that, but we need to get back to that story yeah. from last week. Yeah, because I, I cried. I literally, literally <laughs> cried when the when I when I went yeah. to to pick it up and it was not there. I'm like, oh my yeah. god! You you should have <laughs> seen the texts that were rolling yeah. in to my phone once he figured out that that was gone. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. But we're gonna we're gonna go back to a favorite yeah. memory of yours uh, yeah. from Martinsville, uh, one All of right. ma- one of many, and and yeah. uh, I, this is a cool story. Yeah, it really was, and I, I want to hear it again. All right, all right. Well, here we are. It's 1976. Uh, John Warner, our, our our handsome senator, and Elizabeth Taylor, one of the most glamorous actresses of all time. Or an item. They're not married yet, but they're together. They're they're uh, soon to be married. I think they got married like uh, a month and a half later. But anyway, there they are. 1976. Uh, last weekend in October, and uh, and they're making the rounds for the Ford Dole presidential vice presidential ticket, and they come to Martinsville. To you know, to work the crowd, press the flesh, do all that, and there they are. I mean, it's you know, it's it's John Warner. Not I, he's not a senator yet, but he's he's a big deal. And of course, it was the Taylors, theoretically big deal. So they're part of the pre-race ceremonies and so on and so forth. And they're in the parade lap in the car and waving you know, from the back of the, you know, sitting on the on the on the back deck of the. Uh, of the convertible waving crowd, all that. They did all that. So then the race starts and they go up the the, the entourage goes up and they're like on the top row. There must be twenty or thirty of them. And the uh radio guys uh calling the race, I think it's Barney Hall and his group. I'm pretty sure that they did that they did that race. But whoever it was, I'm pretty sure it's Barney. But anyway, they bring Elizabeth Taylor up to the press box and to their booth and they they uh interviewed her <clears throat> and their their question was well uh have you seen have you seen any any races before and i expect they they thought she'd say no that she hadn't but she said well yes yeah. yes i have i've seen the grand prix at monte carlo and she pauses a second and then she says but this is much more exciting so, I mean, Liz Taylor knew how to work the crowd. And I'm sure everybody who heard that went, yeah, that's our sport. It's more exciting than Monte Carlo. And I, I had friends, lay, I would tell the story later, and people would say, oh, oh, boy, she just really was kidding around. But you know what? I don't think so. I think Liz Taylor was talking about the racing. And I've seen, look, Monte Carlo is more exciting to be there, perhaps, depending on your taste, but for many people to be there with the billion dollar yachts and the casino and, and the, just the grandeur of Monte Carlo, you'd say that's more exciting than Martinsville and the, and the, the suburbs of Martinsville, if you could say that at that racetrack. But the racing in Monte Carlo is usually one car at a time, no passing, you know that it's just it's so incredibly difficult to pass there on that course that you just don't have any. So here you got these modified banging wheels and running around and and working each other over and yeah, it is more exciting. So so that's what she said. All right. Then she goes out and she enjoys the the incredible uh, buffet at uh, at in the press box at Martinsville. <laughs> 
that's how we sports writers remember every place we've yeah. ever been. Is the buffet, and it's it's this great. This is what they had then: fried chicken, ham biscuits, and strawberry shortcake. And so she sampled all that, and then she went out and sat in the stands. Maybe it was like at the very sort of end of the entourage, but she was in among the fans themselves. And I had my telephoto lens camera with me, and I went down and scrambled around to get down standing in, at, the, at the foot of the stand, pointing back up to her and took some photos. And the thing was, I was really about the only person there that I saw <clears throat> who was who was treating her like a star. Everybody else, all around her, they were watching the race. That's what they cared about. Oh, it's Liz Taylor. Oh, that's great. Now watch the race. <laughs> and somebody passed down a <clears throat> a set of headphones, and she put them on. And it was just you know you know why that was because you, it's hard to follow a stock race if you don't have the the soundtrack, you know of what's happening, who's in front, who's getting laughed, all that kind of stuff. So they passed her set of headphones so she could enjoy the race. She put them on. A couple seconds later, here comes down that same line, a can of Schlitz beer. <laughs> Great. She takes it, pops it open, and has a Schlitz. And nobody, nobody bothered her. Nobody was asking for her autograph. Nobody was, you know, sort of, clinging on to her sleeve and telling her, I'm your greatest fan. They were just watching the race with this person who's new to it, and she likes it, and here's your, you know, we heard just heard you say on the radio, you like this. Here, have a beer. I had the feeling that she was about as, as serene and happy in that moment as she might have been in years because of the way she was being treated, just like everybody else. It was a I mean, it's just, you know, I didn't interview her and ask her that, but I saw it and I, and I just, I just thought that was a great moment for her. So after the race, uh, uh, Clay Earls being the great promoter that he was and, and Clay Campbell inherited that, uh, that, uh, trait, those abilities from him. Clay Earls scoops up, um, Liz, takes her down to the, to, to victory circle. And uh, and Jeff Bodine won the race. And Liz there, and she gives him the trophy back then. It wasn't a clock for those races, at least not then. She gives him the trophy and, and uh, gives him a victory lane kiss. And later, <laughs> long after he'd won the Daytona 500 even, Jeff Bodine would say, and I don't think he was entirely kidding, you know, that, well, he'd say, the highlight of my career I kissed Liz Taylor. So, so he was he was happy. And then then she goes back up in the stands to watch the second half of the double header. This was the Cardinal five hundred, I think. The second half of the double header, which is the late models, and they're putting on a great race. And the and the Ford Dole John Warner entourage is ready to go. They're they've got a function back in Richmond. I found this I uh, learned this later from somebody who was working the public relations for that group. And they had, they needed to get on the road. They needed to get going. And Liz was not going. And if, if Liz is not going, the entourage is not going. So they just waited. And she watched well, maybe half of the late model race. And it did get, it was getting dark, starting to get dark. And it was getting very cold. And she finally relented and decided, well, okay. But she, she had a great time, and they were they were desperate to get away, and she wasn't going to go until she was ready to go. So, Liz Taylor, race fan, salute to you. Uh, it was it was I think it was a great day for her. I sure I sure enjoyed being able to get a photo of Liz Taylor with a set of headphones and another one <laughs> tipping back a beer. I mean, there you go. Uh, question is. Do you still have that photo? I do. I do. I think that belongs on uh, Racing Virginia social media yeah. sooner than later. Yeah, we need to. We need yeah. to show that. We, yeah, we'll 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 work something out. I got. I I think I can 
I know I've got them because I've seen them not too long ago. And I'll dig them up and I'll, I'll get you a digital copy. <laughs> that sounds absolutely amazing because I just I personally yeah. I just want to see that because you can picture that and you know Martinsville yeah. and and just the how large larger than life Liz Taylor was at that time and yeah that picture I, I just got to see it I mean in your head you'd think I mean back then I mean Liz Taylor was she, it she was the thing she was it yep. uh, yeah. And uh, that was a big deal when her and John Warner started dating, and then yeah. and, they, and they got married. I mean, that was yes, huge. Yeah, yes, uh, it was. It was a big deal. Big deal. But uh, you know, this this, this is going to be great. It really is. Uh, by the way, um, I we were talking about Denny Hamlin getting into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I relented. Uh -huh. I, I agree. He's going to get in. I my for my only purpose is. And I know that, and I know Mark Martin's in with no championship. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes I think they let people in too easy. You know, but but he has. You, you did bring out some uh, th some things that I didn't think about when we were. T I was talking with Brandon, and that's that he has run. He won a race on just about every racetrack. Yep. Uh, every type yeah, of racetrack. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, he definitely has absolutely. In your in your opinion, who are there people? on your mind that you think should be in there that haven't been nominated to go in there? Well, the obvious one to me is Ray Hendrick. Uh, he, he, you know, there's, there's, it's not limited uh, to, uh, to cup series. Right. And uh, as, as indeed should be the case. And there's a couple of guys who are in there who are not cup racers, and they have great credentials. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anybody should be kicked out, but I think there might be one or two that could have fallen in line behind Ray, and I think Ray absolutely should be uh, should be on the uh, on the list, and everybody should be thinking about okay, when are we gonna get Ray in there? I'm not. I don't get too worked up about, you know, oh, so-and-so should be in the Hall of Fame. The, that Hall of Fame is still pretty young. It's, you know, it's not like the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's not like the the NMPA Hall of Fame in Darlington that's been there forever uh, and some of these others. It, it's, you know, it's still, as Halls of Fame go, pretty young. So, yeah, you can't put everybody in at once. So, sure, there are going to be people who belong in the Hall of Fame who aren't there yet. But Ray, Ray should be on people's minds. It's like, okay, if we've got a, a, a world-class bunch in, in, in a certain year that, that includes, some, say, when Jeff Gordon went in, Jeff Gordon's got to go in on first ballot. I, I don't know. There were a couple of people, some people who thought, well, maybe he should wait in line a little bit. No, 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 no. He won 90, however many, 90-some races. Fantastic champion. Same as Jimmy Johnson. When Jimmy Johnson's eligible, he's going to go in on his first available ballot. Sure. So if you have a great year like that with a great set, well, maybe Ray, you know, what, who's, who's going to be up next year? Who's going to be eligible? They need to be thinking about that. Because Ray should go in. Likewise, Smokey Eunuch, and the and the word on Smokey Eunuch is uh, that his his long feud with uh, with Bill France Senior and then Junior has eliminated him from consideration. And I don't know whether that's the case, but I sure think he belongs. And there must be some others that, if I think hard enough about it, I could think of. Those two stand out to me. Now, the one that stands out for me because of Clay Earls being in is Paul Sawyer. Uh, oh, no question. Good. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Paul Sawyer belongs. He's, you know, and again, I think I, I've thought about that. Why Clay before Paul? I don't really know because both of those guys were, were, you know, arm and arm with with the Francis and the French family, yeah, and they yeah, were. I mean, they they were they sat down at the table on that first meeting. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Clay's 
Clay's track was all his sooner and for longer. You know, that's one difference. Paul was promoting it. It was his track, his business, but it was on the land of the fairgrounds people and so on and so forth. Maybe that's a slight difference. And Clay also made his track because, because he owned it and owned the land and everything about it. He was able to, and did sooner, make his track a, a real sort of show place. It was, it was like, you know, you'd go to that racetrack and there were boxwoods and azaleas, you know? And he made it, he made it look really good and he gave it a, an image that NASCAR didn't have much of anywhere else. So there were a couple of things that kind of made it stand out. And maybe that's why. But boy, those, those are, those are awfully cosmetic, uh, things. And I, I don't know. I mean, Paul should be in there. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it just, uh, I don't know. This is a good topic for us to get mm -hmm. into as well later on um, with you, Randy. Yep. I mean, you have a lot of knowledge about uh, the older drivers and who should be in. I mean, we know the new, the, the Denny Hamlins, mm -hmm. the, the Jimmy Johnsons, the, you know, Kyle Busch. I, I think Kyle Busch is a first ballot. Oh, yeah. Um, Easily. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so I mean, unanimous. Yeah, Kevin, unanimous. Kevin so all you yeah. got to get out and what you got to wait five years or something yeah. like that. Or uh, they, they've changed yeah. the rules well, a little yeah, bit I think this changed. year. Uh, but yeah, well, with one, that, of things, one of the things they've done is, and I can't tell you exactly now, but the class, the the induction classes are going to be smaller, mm -hmm. which is unfortunately. I mean, it's like there's two ways to look at that. One is you don't run out. You don't start. Yeah. You don't get to the point where you're just taking people because, oh, who can we put in this year? But it does kind of, again, because it's a, still a young, relatively speaking, young Hall of Fame, it kind of backs up the pack a little bit for people like Ray and people like Paul. Because, y you know, I don't know what you get. It's, it's like two current and, and one past, and, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's uh it's a legacy person and a couple of a couple of race, racing, you know, relatively modern. I don't know. I can't remember exactly how they set that up. I don't have my notes in front of me. But it did. It is going to slow down the flow a little bit, which will make it tougher. Well, that's that's a a good topic to talk about uh, one time. But we can't thank you again for re, uh, retelling the story of Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, we, we, we I look forward to, over over. yeah, we, yeah, we look forward to, um, talking to you next week. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you're going to top the Liz, Liz Taylor yeah. thing, but, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, a, a good, uh, old memory about Richmond, uh, RIR at the time. Um, with this, with Paul Sawyer and Wayne and Bill, maybe there's a good story in there for somewhere that you got. Yeah, we can think of that. And I, I, I'll, I'm gonna, one of these days, I'm gonna rip off my first race I, I can remember ever story. Too. We like that too. We, we like that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Right. So, thanks, Randy. Uh, folks, that has been story time with Randy Hallman. Uh, but, uh, man, he's just got a lot of great, uh, a lot of great stories that he's going to tell over, over the course of, um, of the year of this year. Uh, and who knows? I mean, hopefully this thing will go even farther, but, uh, Oh, I got a little bad. I got some bad news, uh -oh. you know, cause, cause we talk too much no. or, um, yeah, it was a good interview so far. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, not going to complain about any of that. Uh, we had to, we're going to have to move Chris Rice to next week but but that, that's but. gonna be that's a killer the, next week folks i'm telling you right now I'm, we're gonna tell you what n next week's show is supposed to be yeah in just in just a little bit but uh we want to um we we definitely want to keep up uh the opportunity to talk with uh promoters and see how they are doing i can't thank you guys enough for for listening to last week's show it, it, it kind of blew us away that is the most listened show ever yep yep 
The stats don't lie. <laughs> the most uh, the most clicked on on our website yeah. and the most downloaded on our website uh, is the the sixty ninth yeah. podcast is is number one right now. So and I'm and I'm telling you folks we're 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 working on getting it on iTunes, Spotify, uh, mm-hmm. the Google, uh, whatever other sites we can get it on because I know that a lot of you will want to listen as you know on your favorite podcasting site. Yeah. I mean, it, you can just schedule it in. You can, you know, follow us. So we're we're on that. We're going to get that done. Hopefully, it'll be done in the next couple of weeks. But uh, we need to go back to the who'syourdriver.org phone line, and we need need, need to talk to. Uh, he is the promoter and managing partner of Dominion Raceway and Entertainment, uh, which is an as which contains an asphalt oval, a drag strip, and a road course. Man's busy. Yeah. Um, he's raced the last two weekends without fans. He was in Randy Hallman's column. He is Steve Barrett. How you doing, Steve? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you all? Good, man. Uh, first Good. off, thank you for uh, kind of a last-minute thing. <laughs> sure. You were on the list to, to get on, but we moved you up a little quicker. <laughs> uh, no, no problem. I'm a, I'm a private guy, so it's no problem. <laughs> Well, the, the the one thing that we're trying to do here is try to find out how uh, the uh, the promoters are handling this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, you have taken a different route. Uh, uh, Executive Order 65 allows racetracks to race, but only with participants there, no fans in the grandstands. And you have chosen to do that. You had some, yeah. uh, I, I think both weeks have some really good car counts. And I got to say, 26 late models for a weekly show, that's a good car count in that division. Uh, tell us how good you are, are, you know, kind of doing this. And and, and also, what's your, your thinking behind racing without the fans? So, um, first off, I think all tracks, have to make their own decision. I, I think this is all new territory, obviously. So everybody's going to probably do it a little differently. Our, our situation is we've got a wonderful facility here, and we spent a lot of money, obviously, to, to put it here. So, um, this is our fifth year. And I, I just think if we're going to, you know, invest in racing and build a beautiful facility to do it, then, then given every opportunity, we should, we should race. And, um, we're, we're well managed, I think. And so, uh, you know, we wanted to do it provided that we weren't really losing any money. And I, I don't think we really are. We're not really making any money, but it, it, the, our, our finances are unchanged by holding these weekly events. And, uh, it gives our racers an opportunity, I think, to fulfill their sponsorship obligations. It gives us an opportunity to do the same thing. And it, uh, you know, once the governor decided that, uh, you know, racetracks could open, uh, and I think we were right on the heels of that kind of understanding that that was going to be coming, uh, we went ahead and announced our schedule and, and want uh, our teams to know that our intention, at least at this point, is to race every weekend that we're permitted to and, you know, to try to get back on track and try to put a full season uh, into 2020 if that's even possible. But, I mean, that's our goal. And so, so we, we, we've enjoyed it. I think, I think uh, it's odd. I mean, it is a little different. There's no question about that, but the Facebook, we've been doing a Facebook live yeah. show uh, that I think, that I think gives the fans the window. And so we don't, we don't really feel like they're, they're not with us. I mean, obviously they're not presently with us, but I mean, I think they can see kind of what's going on through that, that offering. And we've never done anything like that before in our lives. And so that's been a, a test to trying to get that figured out. We're still trying to make that a little bit better uh, each week, but uh, we'll continue to do that obviously until we can get our fans back. And then we won't, we won't be doing that. I've, I've received several emails. That's really something you should be doing. No, I don't, I don't really think it is something that we want to continue. So we'll do it until we can get our fans back and then we, we won't be doing it. It's not something we can do at a high level. And so we don't, we don't want to do it, but, uh, but it's been good. The car counts have been great. We last year had great car counts. Um, you know, our staff has been great. I mean, they work really, really hard around here. So I think it's been a, a terrific decision so far. I'm, I'm all in on it. Yeah. And we've, uh, we've noticed, uh, you know, you're keeping your social media channels alive with, with content, uh, the entire time that, uh, that you guys are racing. Um, 
tell us a little bit about what goes into that because as a social media guy myself, I've I mean, noticed the thing. the graphics and the videos and just a really uh, nice mix of stuff. Um, what is what has gone into that and and how has that been a priority for you guys? Well, we we we're lucky. We got great talent. So we have a a guy here that we hired right out of the gate. Um, you know, before we were even open, his name's JD Wright, and he's uh, used to do it for the Coast Guard. He's uh, retired, but he was their social media guy, and he he got us started in a pretty good fashion. And we had Donna Mullins uh, that supports him. Uh, Donna does a lot of things behind uh, the scenes for us, and you know, for for me. So, you know, I, I existed before social media in terms of a racetrack promoter, and it used to be you had to go out and spend a fair amount of money with the local radio station to try to get your message out. And, and social media changed all that. And I, I just view it as a very important component of running a motorsports venue at this point. And so we, we, we're here 24 seven on that side of the equation. And it's got, you know, it's got some ugly with it too. I mean, you know, you get some people that don't yeah. like what you're doing in the post and, you know, but I got pretty, pretty thick skin. And so it doesn't really affect us too much. Occasionally you get to me a little bit, but um, so we just put a lot of effort into it. And we think it's a good way to kind of communicate uh, what we're doing. And, and so that's, that's why we do it. We really believe in it and have invested in it pretty heavily to, to bring that message. Yeah, as for someone that does it for Virginia Motor Speedway as part of my job, uh, and I the same thing. You're going to have people come on there that say things that uh, they are upset with. Um, uh, they may not like the way that you <laughs> did something. Uh, the the thing that I found is I kill them with kindness. Yeah, they get mad <laughs> they, because they tell you things that they would yeah. not say to your face. No, and then the and then normally because <laughs> then normally the your your hardcore fan that comes to your racetrack every week he steps in. Yeah, and does the job for you, and they. Yeah. So I mean, but I mean, it's a, it's got its good and its bad. Yeah. But the, you guys are doing a phenomenal job uh, with the social media stuff. I mean, that's. And it's well, thank you. Yeah. Well, you learn too. I mean, I think yeah, we're open-minded here, and so some of the uh, comments are really, really great and okay. uh, very beneficial to us. And so, uh, you take the good and the bad. I mean, that's look. I don't mind. Understood. Yeah, I don't mind somebody complaining and yeah. but and pointing something out uh, because that gives you an opportunity to fix something if it's something that you can fix. There's a lot of times that right. you, you you get a comment that it just they're just it's out in the blue. You're like, okay, why in the world did you even? <laughs> yeah. You know, you uh, took the time out of your day to tell me that. Well, the, the, <laughs> here, this is my thinking. Sure. Uh, my thinking is, if someone takes the time out to type something negative about you, they're having a really bad day. They yeah. really, they, well, they really are, and yeah. so so you just kill them with kindness. And, uh, you know, try to try to fix the situ situation if you can't. If you can't, you just move on. Sometimes it's better just I to, agree. you know. Uh, I, I totally I, agree. I have yet to ban anybody or block somebody f for uh, saying something on our, our social media. My my idea, my my belief is that if you do that, that that just gives that guy fuel to go on his social media and say, "Oh man, they can't handle it. They, you know, they they know that that they're wrong. They block me. I don't look. I don't care who you are. Just you know, if you're it, the the thing is, I've seen people that have said stuff on social media, and you you've probably seen this too, Steve. Then you see them in the grandstands the next week. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, mean, I I can't yeah I can't say that we're that uh, that good to be honest with you. I, we have banned some people. I I really believe that if the if the language is inappropriate yes, and yes. the message is you know too far left or right, we we will ban you. Yeah. And um, I I'm not going to allow uh, somebody like that to use our platform as a yeah, as their way platform. to yeah. you know promote discord or. Or to or to use language that just is inappropriate uh, in our society. So we we will do it. It's a very rare circumstance, and and it doesn't mean it's forever. Uh, we had somebody that we banned that we uh, allowed to come back on, and we had a you know discussion with them, and they had kind of understood why we did it. But you know, if you're beating up our program, that that pretty much you know we let you do that. It, you you really got to get into a profanity type uh, situation <laughs> or something. 
you know, libelous, yeah. and and then you're you're going to get banned. And uh, but other than that, I mean, if you don't like a call we made or you don't like uh, the way we do things, as long as again it's it's, it's clean language and things yeah. like that, then we understand. That's and that, how we learn and how we do better. We're not perfect. And that's where most of the disagreements come from. They are yeah. so adamant about their race, uh, their race driver. Mm-hmm. You know, or they're part right. of that team. Um, I will tell you this: we have in our drivers meeting, we tell them, uh, it, it, "You are responsible for your crew members, family, uh, whatever they going on uh, social media." Right. And I mean, it's a good way to be sent away from here and not be able to race. <laughs> right. So That's we. Right. That's so, right. But it, now it, let's get back to COVID nineteen. Um, okay. It it. You know, it's it for us, and I I know you you probably know uh, Bill Sawyer with Virginia Motor Speedway has oh, sure. has decided that um, we just aren't going to race this year. We just uh, the, the, with uh, Executive Order sixty five, we just feel like um, it's going to be a little bit before our our governor in the state of Virginia allows fans in the grandstands uh, of of any uh, large you know, in quantity. So, you sure. know, we, we've, we've literally said, okay, we're going to uh, take back and punt 2020 and, uh, and start booking and looking at t- 2021. You guys there, first of all, you need to, you have to take a different uh, approach. You have not only asphalt uh, 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 oval track, you have a drag strip uh, and you also have a, a road course um, that stays busy. So uh, yeah, you know, that's, well, that's, that's all true. You know, we, we would have done, I mean, here's the impact our facility. We would have hosted about 300 events this year. They were already booked and yeah. on our calendar. And, um, you know, about half of that is probably motorsports related and the other half are concerts and corporate events and, and things like that. Our, our model's a little different. I mean, when we built the place and we were spending all those dollars, we kind of understood that motorsports probably wouldn't carry it. And, and it doesn't. And so we need these other uh, events to make it all work. And so I would tell you at this point, I, I think we're lucky maybe to get in 125, maybe yeah. 150 if we get, you know, things get back on track uh, pretty much. I, I also, and I, I don't know if the governor is listening to your, your podcast or not, but, you know, he also, uh, we had put a post on our social media. I don't know if you all saw it or not. And we're non political here, we're a motorsports venue and this is as close to politics as we will ever get but we did we did point out that the governor and his order 65 has limited only racetracks to non-spectators i mean we have a concert venue here we can have up to 50 percent of our capacity at that venue we could we could have a uh, soccer match in the infield of the pits and we could have 50 percent of our capacity as in terms of spectators and so i think that's wrong and um, I, we put a post up. We had almost 90,000 views on that. I think 800 and some shares of it. And I was asked, well, you know, why don't I continue? Well, that's, that's our uh, position. We think that that should be changed. We think that should be changed immediately. There is really no good reason, I don't think, that racetracks, all racetracks, can have about a 50% attendance factor at this point, you know, based on their capacity. And um, so we're, we're disappointed in that. I, I know the governor's got a tough job to do. I get it. I wouldn't want to be him. I've met with him before. He's a nice man. I, we're not going to beat him up, and we're going to be respectful. But he, he likes, he li- And the thing is, he likes cars. He likes, you big, know, I big, think he's I know he does. a big race fan. Yeah, I know he's he, a big race fan. So. No, he does. No, he does, and it's wrong. And I, I don't know why we're stuck with it anymore. I kind of understood it. Early on, early on, we were grateful when we saw that he would open up race tracks with no spectators. We're like, okay, that's heading in the right direction, but but that that should be changed. And so I don't know who's listening to your show, but that that's not right anymore. That's discriminatory, and that that piece of the puzzle needs to at least come off. And you know, again, every racetrack owner, I, I don't, you know, and I know a lot of them, that they're all making their own decisions, yep. and everybody's situation is is different, and so. We respect, uh, you know, you guys, if you if you don't open for the season, I understand it. I hope other people can understand that we really want to, to race here. You know, so it's a funny, I'll, I'll just share this with you, and this is me personally. I, at the end of the season, uh, are exhausted. I am just absolutely yep. whipped. 
And it's that two or three months of winter that allows everybody to kind of regroup and, and get recharged and stuff. But by the time February rolls around, I am excited and I am ready to go for another season. And it was like we got to March and here we go. We got another winter uh, to go. And I told our group here on Saturday, I literally Friday night went home and did not sleep. I was so excited to have our teams coming in here to race last weekend, the weekend before. I, I think because it was a late model race, on Saturday, which which everybody loves weight models, and, and I do too. I mean, I really connect with the weight model car. But, you know, I was so excited that I didn't really sleep. And I got here, and I was just really beat all day long. But I wouldn't change it for the world. It was good to have our teams back. It was good to have some racing here. It was fun to watch. It was highly competitive. And um, it was just great. And so I like what we're doing. And um, I understand it's different for everybody. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep going as long as we – can do it legally and do it in, in general compliance. Yeah, the the um the one and and trust me, I want everybody to know. Cause we're going to have Bill Sawyer on next week, but I want everybody. We want to race. It was mm-hmm. this was probably twenty twenty was going to be the best year in sponsorships, um at at our racetrack. So I mean, sure. uh, and and that just and. Now oh, it went away. Yeah, it went away. And now you look at 2021 and you go, okay, will they think about it next year or has the economy and, and, the, and their situation change? Um, the, the, the one thing that I get a little upset is it, you know, they're like North Carolina. I, I, I love the guys at Ace. I really do. Um, I, pl- I applaud them for what they, they tried. But the, the one thing that we have found out is you can't go up against the the person that ha- holds your business in their hands. You know, Correct. you, you got to be careful because they, you know, they're in, they have your uh, business license, your liquor license, EPA. Uh, I mean, you're in the Chesapeake watershed. So <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I share I I share your opinion on that. I don't take anything away from them. In fact, probably privately, I was. Very supportive. Root, and, uh, I was but, rooting, but yeah, but you do you do run that that risk, and and ultimately, I think almost everybody understood how that was going to play play out. They were embarrassing their governor, and you don't you don't do that. I mean, that's not. And and Virginia has been a different animal from that yeah. perspective. I mean, you got to give Virginia tracks and their management pretty high marks for 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 being respectful and and complying with the order um, and and really trying to, you know, do the right right thing if you want. I, I really don't know of a track that really has violated that order. I know of one. Uh, but, you know, I, I – and I don't – and they may have some special approval too. I mean, we've been very fortunate here. Spotsylvania County, um, you know, had a meeting with their board of supervisors uh, – supervisors, sorry about that and, – and voted unanimously to send a letter of support to – the governor to, you know, try to get him to open up racetracks and other venues that they have here in South Virginia. So we, we had the ACE support. We could have done the ACE thing, but I think that's a short-term game yeah. and, and a long-term problem. So I, but I totally agree with you. And uh, I take nothing away from ACE for. No, I don't either. To, I will to pull that off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as a race fan and as someone that is pretty deep in it, I was like, man, that's bad pretty good idea <laughs> well I mean, it was pretty good i guess until they were doing peaceful protests and things yeah. like that that's that's when you know you're that's when you know you're really past the uh, letter of the law if you would when you start doing yeah. things like that we had a lot of those suggestions too we you know could do a religious service with a race as an intermission those types of things i mean that's just you know you just trying to yeah, you know, uh, on our social media as well, everybody's going, "Hey, you could do this. You could yeah, do that. You could do, yeah, uh, you know, not, try this." That's, Look, that's just yeah, that's uh, not good governance. You I mean, can't do that, for so. you, for me, for Brandon, for all the promoters in the state of Virginia, we just need this stuff to go away. And yeah, if, if that means us kind of holding back a little bit on the reins, pulling back on the reins on what and getting out there. Uh, I think that's a, a good opportunity. I mean, look, that the, they found out somebody at Ace last week was uh, two couple days later found out he was positive right. for COVID. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, I know. that because as I told somebody, you don't think our governor's talking to that governor. 
Sure. And I mean, you look at the states that, that opened a few weeks yeah. ago, they've got record cases now. Yeah. So what are we going to do now? Yeah. And it's, it's, sure. um, but that, that, you know, hopefully this will all go away, Steve, and we'll get back to normal. Uh, I know that, uh, you guys stay pretty busy. I mean, even during the week, I mean, uh, with, uh, car clubs or I would think you do because of the road course. Uh, um, yeah. So, you know, you, we, we've got a driver's club and it, it's a busy, it's a busy place. I mean, honestly, we're here every day of the week. Um, I did take off yesterday though. It what? was just fantastic. Oh man, I slept much through the day. It was, <laughs> it was great. Shame it was on, really great. Shame but, on uh, you no, taking a, a day off. Come on. Yeah, now. I know. I know. It's active and <laughs> nobody saw COVID, nobody saw COVID coming. And uh, it's like my dad uh, told me when I was a young guy, he said, listen, you do what you can and you do the best you can. And if you've done that, then you go home and sleep well at night. And that's, that's how I feel here. I feel like, and I hope that's how everybody else feels too. They they do the best they can given yeah. the circumstances that nobody could have ever imagined, and uh, and we'll all figure it out. And and you know I'm sure if we get to this again in the future, we'll all be better prepared. But it's it's been quite a eye opener, and it's uh, it's it's hard it's hard to to even comprehend it, and it's had such a devastating yeah. impact. It's uh, it is what it is. Well, know? congratulations on uh, two stellar weekends with car counts uh, uh, again 26 late models i mean we we you i mean you've been doing this a while you, that it's been a long time since a track scene 26 and for just a weekly show with with no special event so well uh, and, and but you know we weren't competing against much so it yeah. kind of tells you the state of the, the union if you would to a certain extent i mean it's uh it's sad i mean it really really is sad that um you know, there's not a whole lot more cars in the marketplace, and that that division is struggling so much. It's just so expensive. We uh, joined with Langley this year on a yep. division that we created called the Virginia. We're going to call it the Virginia Racer, um, and that that series has grown dramatically. I mean, that every year that one seems to to grow. You know, by three or four or five cars. I think I think we think there's about twenty or so uh, out there that'll be fairly regular with us each week at this point. And that's, that's a late model, but it's just a, a more efficient, more economical. And it, and it gives you the same feel and it looks the same. And it, it's just not quite as fast, but I mean, it, it's, it's a great program. So we all have to figure out ways to, to make the economics of racing better and, and better for all of us, you know, make it work. So uh, it's tough. Yeah. Tough just, business. Well, just know that you got the racing Virginia pod, uh, podcast that will be promoting your stuff. Uh, on a regular Thank basis, you. making sure that uh, people know when you're racing, uh, uh, they they have uh, all kinds of social media. I mean, if you go go to Dominion Raceway uh, on on Facebook, I think you guys are on Twitter too, aren't you? Um, yeah. there's, there's yeah. a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, uh, and they got a great website. Dominion so. Raceway in Spotsylvania, yeah. Virginia. Yeah. So Dominion Raceway and, and dot com, I think it is, right? It, it's uh, DominionRaceway.com. Yeah, yep. gotcha. Easy sure. enough. So, and, and, and we may lean on you a little bit to uh, to tell us which drivers uh, might be good a good fit to come on and promote them and get them some recognition as well. So, again, mm -hmm. thank you for taking some time out of your schedule, sure. my friend. And uh, uh, we we wish you the best of luck in oh, thank you. Uh, in racing. Thank that you, that, thank com you. that comes from me and uh, the Racing Virginia podcast, and as the director of marketing for Virginia Motor Speedway. So, uh, well, thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. And same same to you guys too. And don't don't be a stranger if you ever want to come down, please. Please do. And as you know, I told you this morning when you called me, I'm, I'm a fan. I, I listen to the podcast and I watch uh, and read Randy's uh, written spots. And, and so we appreciate all you're doing as well. And uh, well, it's like I tell everybody here, we're all in this together. It takes all of us at this point to make uh, a racetrack work. We need the teams, the sponsors, the media, the fans, the employees, the facilities. We need it all. And, it, and everybody has a role these days in trying to make it all work and um, enjoy the sport. So we appreciate you too, and thank you for having me on this morning. Well, success at um, success at one track is good for all the tracks. Um, Absolutely. Uh, a racetrack closing is not good because <laughs> that yeah, that, that, sure. that starts the the uh, conversation with sponsors. Well, how come so and so closed? Well, blah, blah, blah. so. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, continued success uh, there, at Dominion, oh, and, and I know I know we'll have you on before the end of the season again. Well, that'd be great. Let me know when you guys need me, and I'll be there. Yeah. 
Thanks. Uh, folks, he Thank is um, Steve Britt. Uh, he's promoter and managing partner at Dominion Raceway. Man, this has been a great. Uh, that's been a great show. It really has. Even though we lost Chris Rice, but holy smoke, next next oh, next man. week's is going to be on fire. I got to figure out how to conference in two guys at the same time. Because you know that in doing so, we're going to have one hell of a conversation. Yeah. Chris Rice, Elliot Sadler. Uh, I think you just you just revealed who we're oh, going to have next look, week. Look, I don't care. We're really got uh, so far uh, Quinn Half. Uh, he is a uh, cup driver uh, out of Northern Virginia. Uh, hopefully, we'll make that happen. Mm-hmm. So, it looks like he's uh, scheduled for next week. We got Elliot Sadler. We got Chris Rice. Who I th- they know each other, don't they? <laughs> a little <laughs> Just bit. Just a little, a little bit. bit. Who else do we have? We have somebody else. We've been talking about him all day. I can't remember. I'm trying to blank. Mr. Sawyer. Oh, Bill Sawyer. <laughs> oh, Lord. My, my boss. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long Boy, show, he, man. He, by, by the way, this has got to be got to go on the record as the longest race in Virginia podcast. Yeah. Look, we're sorry, but we're bumping up on two hours look, now. We're giving you something to do during yeah. this COVID nineteen pandemic. Okay, so uh, we do cut these things up into little small bites a lot of times. Yep. So, and uh, we'll continue to do that, uh, put, yeah. putting them on social media, and uh, you know, giving those bite size. Yeah. You know, pieces of information. So hopefully, it intrigues you to uh, you know listen to the whole thing because it's some really good stuff. And, and folks, uh, I uh, you know, if you've got a suggestion, somebody you want to come, you know what? We need to find a super fan. I've got mm. a super fan in mind. Maybe okay. we need to have a fan on and interview them and see how they are having to deal with this. Because you know, if they're a big cup fan and now a, a local racing fan. They can't necessarily go I, to these I've got, tracks. I've got a guy that I know goes to Dominion, yep. Langley, Virginia Motor Speedway. He goes to uh, – he, shoot, he's been just about everywhere. Yeah. He, him and his daughter go everywhere. So um, uh, that might it just that might be a good idea. It might be. might be. It could be you. You don't know. Yeah. You know, people that listen to this show, we might pick one of you uh, to, to be on interview. That could be a segment. Yeah. Have a have a fan of the week or yeah, fan of the month we, or, oh. or something like that. But, Especially when you know we're transitioning into yeah. hopefully you know to video. The, yeah, to, uh, well, sort, well, yeah. that's what I was I was wasn't going to say that, but you're right. Um, transitioning from no fans to possible fans. Yes. To you know to them going from being deprived of of the thing that they love to do the most and watch the most to actually getting to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll talk about that again. But, hey, if you haven't liked or followed our social media channels, please go do so, Brandon. Racing Virginia on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There you go. Uh, And, obviously, RacingVirginia.com, driven by HoosierDriver.org. Go there for schedules, uh, results, if if the – uh, the press releases get sent to us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could we're, we're trying. We're trying. Um, and, and if you notice, we kind of changed. Uh, we're not going to get – we don't start the show with a lot of results. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they got a little redundant and a little dry. So uh, I think you'd rather hear us interview a winner or a driver yeah. get some, or a promoter. Get some perspective that you might not otherwise have heard. You know, the yet. other thing is we gotta we got to get our – our boss on. Who's that? Brent Gamble. Who's, who, he's our boss? Oh, at least I thought so. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he, he's the guy that's been I don't dir- know. directing they, they, the they ship. Ch- they've changed a lot of stuff yeah, around here. <laughs> so he's, he's not my boss anymore. He's going to like that this is a yeah, two-hour podcast. Yeah. yeah. He um, likes the long ones. Well, he's a radio guy. Yeah, he's he a radio from guy. radio. Yeah. So. But, yeah. uh, hey, folks, we can't thank you enough for listening to our stuff and uh, l- listening to us babble yeah. uh, and talk about racing. Um, maybe one of these days we'll take some, we'll do this live somewhere and we'll take phone calls. You know, that would be awesome. I can't, I just can't wait to go to a live racing event. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it is the weirdest feeling for me. I have been doing racing on the weekend for 30 years, every weekend, just about. Yeah. Since I was, since I was four, that would this be. This is, <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Oh, having a younger co-host really is wonderful. Uh, with that, folks, we're going to uh, thank you on behalf of Brandon Brown, the youngster, and me, the old geezer, uh, Dave C. Thank you for listening. And just remember, folks, keep racing, Virginia.